Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to our Daniel Boone viewing party. So as you see tonight, we have special guest. Do you prefer Bobby or only your friends call you Bobby? We should call it's you Robert like Carradine. Daniel, you know, like <laughs> some people call me Robert. Nobody calls me Bob. And most of, most of my friends call me Bobby. It's kind of like De Niro. Okay, there. I, I think on that one, I need a little drink. <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, but I, I got to say, your whole family really does have the acting genes. You know? I yes, mean, it's, I, uh, it's, and, and I, I love that we get to see your dad tonight when we, when he came on and did one of our shows. Was it, was it rough? Were you like pushed into it because of everybody around you? I was you pushed doing into it, it Darby. Yeah. No, well, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want, I had no interest. I just wanted to be a racing driver. The Cowboys. Your brother has described you as a race car driver that's an actor. I've described myself as that to just try to get sponsors to keep <laughs> paying for the racing. <laughs> but okay, because, yeah, well, you know, me, I it was my free choice, of course, at six months to start acting. It wasn't like I was pushed into it by the family, so. Well, no, I, I heard that you, you gooed when they said, <laughs> Darby, get ready for your close-up. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing Bobby, to be Bobby. Up in the same town at, during the same time, and we're still in the same crazy town, the same crazy business. Did you guys know each other when you were boys? No. So when did you officially meet? On a movie called Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. That now was the first called, time you met? Now called The yeah. Marshal. Really? That was the first time we met. Well, there was that one we got fired off of, or I got <laughs> fired off of it. I think you went and did it. What? The surfing movie. Oh, did you get fired off of that too? Yeah, I got fired off of that. We both got fired from the same movie. You don't remember what the name of but it was? It obviously didn't do well without you two. Get to know each other or anything back then. Well, you know what they say, Ginger? You haven't made it till you've been fired. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they say? I thought it was <laughs> until you get the sentence, you'll never work in this town again. Uh, or the, the one from the acting teacher, right? Forget it. <laughs> I thought the one from the acting teacher was faster, funnier. <laughs> More energy. More energy. <laughs> Anyway, so to set up tonight, this is this is really great because not only is it my mom's birthday, you know, the twenty fourth, but this is the fifty sixth anniversary of Daniel Boone premiering. Right now, today, today, fifty six years ago, wow. on on her birthday. That's awesome. That's why, if you, it's kind of a spiritual thing. I think it was a little wink up there because my dad had passed away. And anyway, um, so it's very cool that we're doing this tonight because Thursday nights is when it always aired, seven thirty. Yeah. So here's a question. Did you ever see this episode with your dad? I never did. Okay. But I'm about he to. never watched Daniel Boone. No, it's, it's I watched okay. Daniel Boone. Because I just didn't watch it. I never watched time. Long Riders because. You didn't see Long Riders? No. Didn't I tell you that? You're missing out, man. You know why I didn't see it? Because you weren't in it? No. <laughs> yes. Well, kind of. It was that terrible jealousy thing. Uh -huh. Not only did you get to do a great Western with all the guns and all that fun your things and driving yeah. through plate glass windows, but you got to do it with brothers. Yeah. Your brothers, real brothers, a real and it's Playing fun. Brothers. And I always wanted a big brother. That's why I love Dan Haggerty so much when he latched on his fun. I always wanted a brother. And here you had all these great brothers and you got to go out and play cowboy and Indian with them. The cowboy and bad guys. So how'd you know we went through a plate glass window if you hadn't seen it? He's calling me on right there, isn't he? <laughs> because when we were doing the um, when we were doing Bill Tillman, right. the marshal now, right. I did try to stream it. Well, I said, okay, this is silly. I got to watch it now. And I couldn't get the account to work or anything else, but I saw the trailer a couple of times. Cool. But don't worry, we'll watch it. All right, if I can people don't, it. If people don't hate us or arrest us after this, maybe we'll watch that and, and we'll get the comment on that one too. Well, I don't think they can arrest us for crawling after drinking. Oh, no. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Weren't you safely no. secure in the backyard as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so like you fence. You're not on the front stoop or anything. Uh, <laughs> not yet. We're social distance, and if there's, you know, if Bobby has the urge to come over and hug me, I do have my face covering here right away. So <laughs> we're good. So this is a fun movie. Your dad comes on and does this movie. He's a scary man. He's a very scary man. 
especially when you're when you're his son. I bet. Yeah. I bet, just a look. Oh, you yeah. didn't have to lay a hand on you. I don't know if you no. did or not, but occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. But just by a look, man. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So, so I know the question's going to come up because uh, Victoria Price was on here a couple weeks ago, and of course the question was, was her dad really like the persona that he always portrayed? So are you saying your dad was very similar to the personas that he portrayed? As, no. Not as a villain, but as a... No, he was not. Uh, he was actually a very sweet, uh, articulate guy um, who loved to tell stories. I do remember stories. <laughs> him, France, everybody kind of huddling around him. Oh, yeah. No, he that. just, and uh, me and my brothers had heard every story at least a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, you know, he liked to tell stories. Were they stories about his career or were they stories yeah. about like your family and oh, his no. relatives? And Stories about, I remember some, the time I was working with John Barrymore. And, you know, and that's how it starts. Wait a minute. He didn't tell you the time he worked with Darby Hinton? You know, he may have Darby, I, but... I'm sure he must have. He I must mean, have, you know, yeah. It's somewhere between, you know, Grapes of Wrath and... Uh, some of the Everything you always <laughs> wanted to know about sex but were afraid to ask? Oh, yes. That was a Woody Allen movie. And he was in that. I, yeah, he was the surgeon that was going to cut it off. Oh, my goodness. Remember Rex Reed wanted to get a, a change? <laughs> If I had been allowed to see that movie, yes, of course I remember. So yeah, somewhere between those two, you think he would have brought up Daniel Boone and getting to work with Darby Hinton? You would have. You would have. Oh well, we'll correct that. So, should we save the questions for the first break, or how do you want to do this? Ginger? Yes, no, we'll go ahead and we'll do the first break. So let me do my little spiel. So welcome to everybody to our Daniel Boone. Tonight's episode is called The Witnesses. It has Darby Hinton in it. It has John Carradine as the bad guy, Zach. I forgot, he's a pirate or something. Um, it also has a very, very young John Walmsley, who a lot of you will know from the Waltons as Jason Walton. So that was kind of an interesting surprise. Uh, the air date of this episode was January 25th, 1968. I won't wow. tell you how old I was. <laughs> must have been. <laughs> so Bobby says he's never seen this before, so this will be interesting. And Darby apparently has not seen it in a very long time. So pay attention so you guys will know what people are talking about when they ask their <laughs> questions. <laughs> Thank you. 
Israel. Biggest step a man can ever take in his whole life. I don't know if he's ready or not. I'm ready, fellas. I'm ready. What do I have to do? Well, we have a very secret initiation ceremony. All sorts of stuff. Like being able to attend midnight meetings, tell whoppers of tall tales. But never, never break a swear to your fellow black pirate. And being able to catch ticks and globals without squashing them. All kinds of stuff. Gosh. How many people you got in the Black Pirates? So far, just Stinky and me. Of course, we just don't let anybody in it. Let's get going to the Pike House. The Pike House? That old place is haunted. Mr. Pike is the meanest man that ever took a breath of air. And Mrs. Pike is a witch. Part of your initiation. The Pike House? Come on, Pike. Oh, come on. Initiation right now. First thing, you gotta get up to that porch. Got your slingshot? Right here. You gotta throw three rocks against the front door. Right, Israel? Right. It's gotta be three, Pudge. That's the rule. <laughs> but what if old Lady Pike comes out? You wanna be a black pirate, don't you? Then get going. Pudge, wait, wait. in jail. I've been out for a while. It took me some time to find you, partner. You going to invite me in? Oh, Nettie's asleep. I hate to wake her. Oh, let's not waste time, Zack. I come for what's due me. A fast move, Zack. You just take that pistol out of your belt and put it down on the floor in front of me. Real slow life. Back up, Zack. Into the house. Boy, did you see that? Something mighty big sprung inside that house. Wish my Paul was back from his hunting trip. Ah, uh, the black pirates can handle this. I think we better get Pudge's initiation over with right now. Gosh, fellas, I don't know. Sure is spooky around here. I tell you, I ain't done it. Did you hear that? Sounds like they're having a brawl. We gotta find out what's happening inside there. Look, fellas, 
Couldn't we have the initiation some other time, huh? My ma's going to give me an awful whooping if she finds out I'm gone at this hour of the night. I say let's get the initiation over with. I'm for that. What do I have to do? Spy, Pudge. Got to learn how to spy in order to become a black pirate. Go up to that front window and peep in it. Why do I have to do that? Israel just told you why, stupid. We got to know what's happening in there. Black pirates are the best spies there is. Well, I don't think it's fair. I bet you guys never looked in the Pike's window. Well, we wouldn't be afraid to. Then I dare you to do it now. I D-double dare. I'll do it. If you'll do it first. The Black Pirate can't run out under there, Israel. Especially a D-double dare. I know, I know, I know. All right. As long as you guys keep watch. I'll just kill you both. I'll find it myself. You didn't come out here to hide and change your name for nothing. That's us, too. Me and Nettie. We've been running. Well, you can stop running. Because I'm going to unburden you of that gold. For the last time, Zack. Sam, no! Oh, makes sense, Sam. If you kill me... Nobody saw me come here. Nobody will see me leave. I tell you, I ain't got it. I always knew you for a liar. Fix something to eat. Make sure that Kobe's good and hot. If I want the truth, Zack, or you're gonna be less one head. Easy, Sam. It is the truth. British officers, they stole the gold right out from under me. There was nothing I could do about it. That's a good story, Zack. But I don't believe it. We had the gold. You suppose we'd be living like this? Well, you're smart, Zack. Smart enough to do just that. Where's that coffee? In a minute. I'm betting that gold is right here. And when I find it, I'm not only taking my share, but yours too. Well, come on, come on, pour out. Stealing's one thing. Murder's another. It was him or us. It's just as simple as that. Now, don't follow. We're gonna get caught. Why doesn't Israel get out of there while the getting's good? I don't know. Start digging and I'll take a look. Running like a scared rabbit. You think he saw anything? I don't know. Might have been just a chicken thief. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. We better move the grave just in case. Yeah, now, what's this? 
kid slingshot. The Black Pirates. Stupid. Let's meet at the cave tomorrow and decide what you do. Meanwhile, don't tell anybody what happened, okay? Agreed? Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Let's go. See ya. Israel Boone, I've had just about enough of your sneaking out at all hours of the night to play pirate. Now, do you realize what time it is? Yes, ma'am, but I Have just... you been to that cave again? Yes, ma'am. I don't I... want to hear any of your tall tales. I don't want to hear another word from you, for that matter. And I never, ever want to catch you out again at this hour. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. And when your father gets home, we're going to have a talk. Do you hear? Yes, ma'am. Right now, you're going to bed. And you better be up bright and early in the morning, ready for your chores if you know what's good for you. Yes, ma'am. I told Darby the look that my dad gave uh, uh, as he looked off to the boys running away. I'd see my brother Keith make that exact look. <laughs> <laughs> Was he mad at you? No, he, it was in a film. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> well, that uh, one, oh, now remember that, and that's the same kid, too, from the last The Peace Tree. The, from the Peace Tree, right? No, no. the Peace Tree from Copperhead Izzy. Oh, right, which we just was the last one we saw. I hate to right. say they're blending together, but yes, Sheldon, we decided he's a dentist now or something. Somebody looked up an article. So All right. Kid, I, the guy? No, no. The, the other guy. one. Okay, the one who's an old-time friend. Right. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did another show. He used to do a lot of Disney things because uh, we had Butch Patrick on, and Butch said that he did a couple of Disney things. That's Sheldon you're talking about. Yes. Did you recognize the other boy? Did you talk to John Walmsley at the convention a couple of years ago? When he was at the um, I do, one. and I talked to him. Our, our kids actually went to the same school and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess I didn't do my homework, but I probably could have gotten him on the phone to come say hi. <laughs> I don't know. I was shocked to find out he was the voice of Christopher Robin. I did not oh, know wow. that. Isn't that cool? That's, That's always really interesting. Cool. But yeah. anyway, okay, so we got some questions. Karen Glick says, Darby, what was it like to work with Virginia Gregg? She was such an amazing character actress. I'm assuming and, you know, somebody, somebody writing a book on her um, actually called me up and asked me that. And evidently, I did uh, another movie with her later in life. Um, I guess I, I think I did like three things with her. But I, you know, it's so hard to say because I didn't really spend that much time with the adult actors because when I wasn't on the camera working. You were in school. I was in school. Yeah. And when I wasn't in school, You're I was trying camera. to learn my lines. Yeah. And when you weren't learning your lines, you were enjoying that there might have been another kid on the set. Yeah. So I didn't really get that much of a chance to, to talk with everything. I knew she was scary too. This was, I sent you a picture earlier. If you put it up, it's with your dad. And I'm sitting here because I'm sure my mom said, get in there, you know, get, get a picture, get a picture. I didn't even look happy to be in that picture. If I can find it. I think I have it. Here it is. Did you hate getting your picture took? There it is. There, there you go. See? Oh, wow. Awesome, man. See, I don't know if I look that happy there either. These two pretty scary people I'm working nah, with. No, you look all right. Okay. okay. I noticed the date on it says October 67. So when did you actually film this episode? Uh, probably somewhere around that date. Oh, well, that makes sense. I, I, how long did it take your mom to develop her pictures? 
<laughs> well, back then you did, you know, you had to shoot the whole roll right. and then you sent it away. And then, it, you know, it took about a week, 10 days and you would get it back. And you'd, you'd hope that it wasn't overexposed or underexposed or lost in the mail. And that was the worst when you take a whole roll of film and it gets lost. Or you get it back and it's all the wrong exposure oh, or something. Yeah. And kids won't know what we're talking about. No. But yeah, if you see that, he get my picture taken when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom used to do it all the time. And of course, when I go to appearances, they would do it all the time too. But And back then it took so long because you had to get the aperture, the ASA, the focus, the this. But now I'm thankful. That's why I put my whole book together because she had just boxes and trunks of pictures. So great. And the negatives too, right? And the negatives too. Oh, that's great. But I, do you even keep the negatives? I'm doing good to keep the pictures. Well, uh, my ex-wife's father decided some years ago, he found a box of the negatives of their entire childhood. He said, I don't need these and tossed them. You know what I have? It's very cool. I have those old Viewmaster things. Yeah, I have the those. two different pictures that yes. you put in. Yeah, and the stereo. Right? I have a ton of those. I, I I don't even know how to view them. I guess you can go on and find a viewer for them. Trust me, you can find a viewer on eBay. Cheap. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. You family pictures, and no. was there a photographer in your family? Well, my grandfather was actually like a semi-pro, but I don't know what happened to his images. Somewhere I have a picture of him sitting on his four-cylinder Indian motorcycle. And I've got to find it. I kind of know where it is. It's stuck in a book in my boxes of books. So I know, you know, which vicinity it's in. That's about it. Gotcha. Well, Bobby, don't you have like a whole bunch of like uh, film footage of your family? Didn't you say you had like a bunch of family? We did have it. And um, I decided that because I was moving too often that I should give it to my older brother, Chris, for safekeeping. And then his house burned down in the Malibu fire. So now that's gone. But I think Keith, my brother Keith, had it transferred uh, to DVD. So oh. I think we have it. Well, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, so moving on. So Susan Harlan has a question for you, Darby. Did you ever sneak back in after a date and get caught by your mother like Israel did? <laughs> Um, I was kind of fortunate growing up. I had the guest house. Ah. <laughs> so um, I, had a, I had kind of my own comings and goings. And um, no, I don't think there was ever a time that she really got upset that I uh, snuck back in. Excellent. All I right. was good at my snuckering. <laughs> You're snuckering. That's a word we learned a couple weeks ago. Uh, so this one's for you, Bobby. Uh, Kathy says, my question is for you, Bobby. First off, love your dad and everything I've ever seen him in. What a busy man. Second, thanks for joining us. Uh, did he ever take you and your brothers camping and tell ghost stories? <laughs> well, I don't remember if he told us ghost stories, but I do remember I was pretty little, but we went to Yosemite, uh, and we had a tent and everything was pretty cool. And in the middle of the night, we heard a bear uh, getting into our stuff, our food. And uh, he went out there with a Swiss army knife and threatened the bear. And uh, that seemed like an incredibly stupid thing to do, but the bear ran away. How old were you? Oh, probably five. Oh, so you were young. You guys were young then. <laughs> uh, I was young. <laughs> uh, so Tammy said, yep, dentist, that was me, confirming about Sheldon. Uh, Stacy Schaefer asks, I haven't seen any of Bobby Carradine's childhood roles. Can he share a photo, please? I don't think he brought any photos, but he was, what, how old were you when you did the Cowboys? 17? 17. Is that, that's not the first thing you did, though, is it? It is the first thing. First thing. If first you, thing he does, and he goes in there and tells John Wayne how to act. Okay? <laughs> I mean, if you're talking no, about I, a kid with cojones. I didn't tell him how to act, Darby. I told him. You directed him. Yeah, because he was, was messing up the line. <laughs> I was just, 
I was just trying yeah, to Yeah, too bad that old cowboy didn't know how to deliver a line. Oh, man. <laughs> and when you watch the film, he took my suggestion, which is pretty funny. So tell that person that asked the question. Stacy. Tell Stacy to Google the Cowboys, uh, Bonanza, um, uh, Mean Streets. Um, those are some early ones where she could see, uh, oh, Kung Fu, the second episode from the pilot. Uh, then she could see what I was up to uh, when I was starting out in my first starring role. Okay. Holding for sound. Right. Tell Stacy that if she wants a real kick in the butt, watch the Pom Pom Girls. All right, oh, Stacy. so watch the Is Pom Pom Girls. No, that's my first starring role. And uh, the movie did tremendous business. And it actually, uh, according to some reviews I've read, started the whole kind of, uh, you know, Porky's, uh, <laughs> All of those kind of teen. Well, those high class films. High class those, teen. Those, those films. classics. <laughs> I have a question for you in this time of COVID, because we were all very excited for you, and I know all your fans were excited for you that Lizzie McGuire was coming back. It is coming back. So what, what's the story on that now that you know, since everything was shut down for? So well, long. I've been driving around uh, Los Angeles because I live here, and I've seen so far five. Uh, picture company set up with all her trailers and stuff and Hilary Duff who plays Lizzie uh, she's been mid meeting with the writers and the showrunner twice a week for the last two and a half months uh, so they're they're building up a stack of scripts they're not trying to figure out how to write you out of it are they, are they? Uh, no I'm the dad come on <laughs> <laughs> He hey, listen, I was the granddad in the last in the Hallmark one I did, so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we go from woman to dad, granddad. Right. To dead dad. Oh. All right, getting back to the episode. Here's one for you, Darby. Susan McDonald asks, was the episode actually filmed at night? From Sue and No, Sue actually, and Bobby and I were talking about that while we were watching it. I'm oh, sorry, I'm hitting the mic there. No, we were talking about it. Everything I've seen so far was filmed on a soundstage. So it didn't matter whether it was day, night, raining, snowing, although it doesn't snow much here in LA. But well, it'll, it'll snow on stage. Well, it, it, I had it many times snow. You and did? I had to pull those little plastic flakes out yes. of my eyes. Horrible. Because they get stuck in your eyes yeah. when that happens. Uh, but at least we didn't have to. A couple of times I remember pausing for airplanes, even inside the sound stages, but usually. Any of the outdoor things didn't bother you. <clears throat> well, you know, speaking of uh, movie magic, I remember I did this film called Tag, The Assassination Game. And my co-star was Linda Hamilton. Oh. And I was the, like a reporter, either a real reporter or a reporter for the university newspaper. But whatever it was, we wound up on a roof. Uh, you and Linda Hamilton? Yeah, and we're gonna do, we're gonna have a kiss. Oh, and right really? at the moment we're about to kiss, her hair kind of blows in the wind. And I actually got a fan letter from somebody that said, God, that was so great. The way that wind came up right when you were kissing her. You know, and I'm like, it was a fan. Off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Not a human fan, a fan a fan, fan. electric yeah, yeah. fan. No, I mean, you were the fan. It, it's all... It's so you didn't make her hair blow with your kiss? Actually, I did. You did? Because the fan was off, and then her hair blew. You know, people ask, how can you be in this business this long? You know, the rejection, the this, the that, everything else. To get paid to kiss Linda Hamilton, you know, it's not a bad gig. No. No. Ah, you boys. OK, uh, here's a question for you, Bobby, from Todd. When was the last time you watched Long Riders? I think the last time I saw it was maybe a year ago. I was at a uh, Western film festival and I was the honoree and that's the film they chose to show everybody. And I hadn't seen it on the big screen, I think since it came out in 1980. So it was, uh, it was really a thrill. And I must say, because it's a Western, 
you know, it's timeless. So, you know, it, it just wasn't out of uh, time at all. It was just, I really like that film. It's a good Western. Well, maybe if we have a, a good enough time here, we'll, we'll put our cowboy hats on, get dressed up and, and watch that one and talk about it. Today? Not today. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we know you left your we cowboy hat at home. Fun and joy. We're watching but two in one day. That'd just be too much. It would be. Today's all about Darby and uh, Daniel Boone. <laughs> all was all about me. What are you talking about? Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. What? Who was helping you learn your lines for the role? My mom. So she was there with you every day? She was supposed to be. She would at least drive me to the set. And that's usually when I got my lines, driving to the set in the big Cadillac, no seat belts, you know, and she'd be reading the script and going over lines with me. But once you got to work, yeah, did you have a production assistant or somebody helping you get them down? Or, or how did you do that? No, once you got there, you were supposed to know it. You, you went right into school. Right. You know, you did makeup or, you know, if they wanted to line up the shot, you line up the shot. Then you run into school, then you go to makeup, and then you're... Uh, you're working your eyes. You're supposed to have known it by then. And do they, uh, did they ever hand you last minute changes? Oh, all the time. Was that a challenge for you? No, I was, I was You're pretty good. Pretty good. Lines? Fess would have to tell me. I'd have like Jack Oakey or stuff. When he was on there, I remember that one in particular. And well, first of all, he couldn't hear. So if his back was to the director and he yelled cut, he would just keep talking and going on. And everybody is so polite because there's this legend on the set. They were, right. And I'd be like, uh, you know, you can stop now. So, but a fest a couple of times would have to tell me, don't give the guest stars their lines. So I, I had a good memory. I, it, my mom read it to me a couple of times. I knew, you had it. Once I knew my line, she read it to me a couple of times. I knew yeah, everybody there. else's lines. Yeah. And I had a bad habit of correcting the guest stars if they didn't know their lines. And you were... Eight or nine at the time? I think the word precocious came in. You that. were definitely precocious. Um, I did the show from six to 12. Because my son, uh, I think when he was around 15 or 16, sometimes I would ask him to read the lines with me. And we go through it two or three times, and I'm still like stumbling along trying to get him. He, he knew all my lines. Yeah. Same deal. Same deal. This is a fresh gray matter. The, the youth, wasted on the young. Yes, because on, <laughs> on Lizzie McGuire, uh, the kid that played my son, Jake Thomas, his father was on the set with him every day. And by the time he was on the set, he was ready tracked. to go. Yeah. So I just wondered if you had somebody doing that for you as well. well that's the way it was supposed to be. You, uh, an, uh, an adult, your a parent, is supposed to be within ice eyesight and earshot of the child at all times. Now, that doesn't always work, we know that. And with my mom, it was difficult. She was a single mom, three kids. So, so she'd just leave you on set? <laughs> kind of, yeah. I'm sorry, Darby. No, that's okay. No, but that it's, it's when it. she would forget to pick me up. That, uh, <laughs> that was the hard part. I didn't mind being left there because they were all my friends. And right. Everybody looked out after me, took care of me. And I was behind the big gates with the guards. And yeah, you else. were safe. And then Tammy Locke came on the Monroe's. I, so I had a girlfriend for a little while. I mean, what more do you need? Awesome. Okay, Ginger, we've... Uh, We've exhausted. Time, time for the next. Yeah, uh, we, we've I, I do have two. I have two more questions, and then we'll get back. So Ed Thompson says, Bobby, do you enjoy the cult following you have from starring in the classic Revenge of the Nerds movies? Yes, I enjoy <laughs> it immensely. Who was, doesn't enjoy that? No, movie? but I was recently stopped by the police in Ventura, California, and uh, the uh, police officer said. Uh, what do you do? I said, I'm an actor. He said, have you been in anything I might have, might have seen? And I said, yeah, Revenge of the Nerds. And he goes, oh my God. Okay, hands me back my license. He says, slow down, you nerd. <laughs> so yeah, I like it. Oh, get away with it, you know? And the last question says, Bobby, how tall was your dad? Connie wants to know how tall your dad was. He was six foot two. Oh, he was tall. But, what did... you know, he started shrinking, you know. 
like like you do. Well, with you boys, my goodness, what a handful he had. Oh yeah. Uh, and apparently all right, let's see this all right we're going to continue on this one is a little bit longer at about 17 and a half minutes okay. so we are continuing on with our episode of the witnesses with darby hitton and bobby carradine <laughs> never worked yet. I don't know why you think it's going to work now. Stupid thing. First time. First time to work. Kind of work. Hey, look what it caught. Come on up, boys. Come on. Come on, fellas. Hurry up. Help me get it back up. Not now. I'm too tired. Me too. Couldn't get a whiff of sleep all night. Yeah. Same here. I'm hearing weird noises outside my window. I, I know someone was walking around in our front yard after I got home. Big, heavy footsteps. Like Zach Pikes. What are we gonna do? Pikes will murder us like they did the stranger if they find out it was us who saw them do it. Gosh, I'm too young to die, fellas. With my paw gone, I don't know who to tell. Mom wouldn't believe me because of all the tall tales I've been telling lately. You know how girls are anyhow. My mom would be the same way if I told her. And Pa gave me an awful wail the last time he saw me out after I was supposed to be asleep. Tell? What are you guys talking about? You just said we'd be killed by the Pikes if we tell. Now, wait a minute. There's been a murder. Somebody has to tell. And we're the only witnesses. Not me. I'm not telling. Me neither. I vote we make a pact to keep Mom and tell nobody ever. I vote that way, too. But wait a minute. That's that two against one. We'll do the Black Pirate Swear. Let off? You got it, Israel. The Black Pirates voted. What do we have to do? Stand up. Now put on your patch. Okay. Give me your hand. For you, blood? Mm-hmm. Okay, close your eyes. Put your thumbs together. And repeat after Israel. I is real boom. I punch Farmingham. I stinky brown. Do solemnly swear on my honor to stay mum and to keep this sacred blood swear for the rest of my natural life. And if I don't, may I have my tongue cut off with a poisonous sword. May I be boiled in toad oil. And may I dangle by my toes over a snake pit in July. Worse than that, be thrown out of the Black Pirates Club forever and ever. Do solemnly swear to do whatever it was you just said forever and ever. Agreed. Forever and ever. Here. Now we gotta burn this to really seal the oath. I'll go get the brush. Israel Boom. You looking for something? Maybe this is what you want. Your slingshot isn't it, boy? All the boys have them. Ah. Well, you can tell your friends I found it. Now be glad to return it to its rightful owner. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. You must have dropped it last night over at his house. He knows it was us that saw him. We're as good as dead right now. I don't think so. I think he's just trying to scare us. Well, he's doing a good job of it. What are we going to do? I think we should go home. Maybe in a few days he'll forget all about us. Yeah. Maybe he won't bother us if we don't bother him. <laughs> Whatever you do, fellas, don't tell anybody. My pa promised me a new jackknife for my birthday. What's that got to do with it? Well, if I get killed, Paul will probably give the knife to my brother. And I don't think I could stand that. I'm headed home. Me too. Mum's the word. Agreed. 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 a bite of your dinner. Now, is something bothering you? No, ma'am. He said I just don't feel well. Well, is there something you want to tell me about? No, ma'am. Israel, I'm sorry if I've been hard on you while your father's been away. But you've been impossible with those wild stories and those disappearances in the middle of the night. Now, you're going to have to change your whole attitude. Do you understand that? Oh, yes, ma'am. Can I be excused? All right. But I want you to fetch me some water from the well before you start your school lessons. Yes, ma'am. Pike be doing here? He's after me, because I saw him and Mrs. Pike murder man in their house. Israel Boone, I told you. This isn't a story, Ma. I saw him do it. They buried the body. Stinky and Pudge were with me. They saw it, too. 
It's true, Ma. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, Sarah, but it's very serious. Israel claims that Pudge, Stinky, and he saw Mr. and Mrs. Pike murder a stranger in their house and then bury the body. Homer, get in here. Hello, Mrs. Boone. Homer. Hi, Israel. Mrs. Boone has some questions to ask you, and I want you to tell the truth for a change, or I swear I'll tan your hide so red you won't be able to sit down for a week. Now, Homer, this is very important. Do you know anything at all about a murder in the Pike house? Homer, answer Mrs. Boone. No, ma'am. I don't know nothing about any murder. Stinky! Israel, be quiet. Are you absolutely sure, Homer? Yes, ma'am. I'm as sure as I can be. <sighs> murder? No, ma'am. I don't know anything about it. Besides, Pa would skin me alive if I was ever out that night. That's truth for sure. <sighs> Telling a tall tale is one thing, Israel. But lying and involving your friends in it is another. I just don't know what's gotten into you, but I'm through talking. You know, your father will be home in the morning, and I'm going to let him settle this. In the meantime, you are not to leave this room for any reason. Good to be home. How was the trip? Well, I got enough meat for all season. Wonderful. Where's his room? He's in his room. Pretty day like this? Is he sick? No. Dan, that boy has been impossible since you left. Still telling wild stories, only worse than ever. Oh, he'll grow out of it, Becky. It's just stage he's going through. Now, I agreed with you before, but when innocent people are hurt, I draw the line. He concocted some wild story that Mr. and Mrs. Pike murdered a man in their home. And the story's all over Boonesboro. Has he explained why? He hasn't explained anything. In fact, he keeps insisting that it's really true. That is, until I confronted Homer Brown and Clarence Farmingham, and they both denied it. Well, it's not like Israel to carry make believe this far. Maybe I better have a talk with him. I'm gonna get just a hello. I uh, I hear we've had a few problems since I've been gone. Your mother's very upset over your behavior, especially concerning that tale about the Pikes. But it's not a tale, Pa. Well, imagination's a wonderful thing, son, but you can't let it get away from you. Sometimes, before you know it. Innocent people get hurt. And I know you never intended to hurt the Pikes, but they've been hurt. And I think you owe them an apology. An apology? They're murderers, and that's the plain truth. They're doing an apology from you. The tale you told about them caused them a great deal of embarrassment. Now, you have nothing to be ashamed of in admitting you were wrong. I told a few stories when I was a boy. Some of them were pretty good, too. Now, I want you to come with me right now over to Pikes, and we'll apologize. We'll get that over with. No, Pa. They'll kill me like they killed a stranger. Israel, I'm not going to argue with you. You'll do as I say. Yes, sir.
Miss Pike? What do you want? Can I talk with you and Mr. Pike for a minute? Zach's not here. Well, then may I step in for a moment and talk with you? My wife and I feel that we owe you and Mr. Pike an apology for the story my boy made up. I just want you to know that he's going to be punished for his behavior. And we just want you to know that we feel badly about what's happened. Israel, have you got something to say to Miss Pike? Israel? I'm not going to apologize. Leave him be. I wouldn't accept an apology from the little brat anyway. Him and the mother brats that come by to throw stones at my windows and to point their fingers and giggle and laugh like we were some kind of freaks. Well, you'd better keep him away from here from now on, or he'll really be sorry. Israel. Don't be the one that's sorry. You're witching your mother. Israel. I'm sorry, Miss Pike. You heard? Everything. I think it's time that boy had an accident. One killing's enough. Maybe we ought to clear out. And have Daniel go and wonder why we left? That boy of his would have him digging out there in no time. Well, Sam could have told somebody about the gold. They could come looking for him. Oh, he was too greedy to let anyone else in on his share. The golds are as neat as can be. All we got to do is get rid of Israel Boone. <laughs> can you believe how how menacing his dad is to me i know well no that's a question for you oh, there you are How about when the with the lady did she's that's she was kind of scary when she would yelling at you there's yeah, bobby right, she? i did remember that you and your little brats you know every now and then it, it triggers something in the mind and i remember her looking down yelling you and your little brats <laughs> well what about the cat the cat seemed to do pretty well that black cat was kind of scary too the black cat was stuffed. <laughs> no, it was a real cat. <laughs> I don't think so. All the animals on Daniel Boone are real. We had this conversation several Even weeks ago. Even the ones on that head. They kept that, they kept the animal wrangler in regular money. <laughs> right, okay, good. <laughs> okay, Bobby, here's a question for you. Um, whoever BC is, I always love to listen to Mr. Carradine and I love to listen to you, Bobby. Uh, Cheryl Johnson, we met in Tombstone in Darby. I took you to the museum in Wilcox to show you my family. Oh. So Cheryl Johnson is saying hello. Um, hello, Cheryl. How the heck are you? She's doing, she's doing better now than my technical difficulties are. And Brenda, sorry, Brenda, that's why you're not seeing anything because I screwed up. So uh, here's a question for you, Bobby, from Tammy. When you think about your dad, does a certain age of him come to mind? Like how he looks in this episode or some other part of his life. Like, what's your best memory of your dad? Wow, that's a, a lot of info. Um, well, I was uh, born when my dad was 50. So he was he was old out of the gate. And, uh, <gasps> wait, 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 wait. No, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> what, what are you talking Ooh. about? <laughs> All right, He's anyhow. still young. <laughs> He was older than most dudes are when they, they have their kid. Um, but what I do remember uh, pretty succinctly is uh, he, got a, he got a boat. Um, I think I was about 17 or 18. He had had a boat before I was born uh, called the Bally, which was a 65-foot schooner. And he used to sail around uh, the Santa Monica Bay with uh, uh, 
Uh, Humphrey Bogart. Uh, Hold on. There aren't many airplanes flying, but every now and then. Apparently they all decided to fly tonight. <laughs> Holding for sound. So he would sail around uh, with Humphrey Bogart was on his boat. Tyrone Power was on his boat. And they were sailing around and getting paid for it by the government because they were part of the coastal watch. <laughs> You know, looking out for the Japanese during World War II. Um, well, they did a good job. Yeah, they never got here. They never got here. But because of that, uh, when my father passed in 1988, we were able to get him a burial at sea with the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, the Very Navy cool. would have done it, but we couldn't, we couldn't go on a Navy ship as civilians to bury him. It would have, they would have just taken him out and buried him. But uh, because it was the Coast Guard, we could go along too. And the thing that was so great about it was that the Coast Guard, you could tell that these guys had not been in their dress uniforms often because all of the buttons were like pulled like that. <laughs> you know, the uniforms barely fit. But they took them out to the uh, Marine graveyard in the uh, Catalina Channel, which is on a chart. You can look it up. And they, they, they stopped the... the uh, the boat, the ship, and uh, they did a 21-gun salute. They played taps, and off he went. Nice. So that, I really like that because I can't tell you how many times I was stuck in the Catalina Channel with my dad because we ran out of wind. He <laughs> forgot to turn off the transmit on the radio. The batteries were dead. We couldn't start the engine. We would float out there for a day. So anyhow... That, that's some stories about my dad. That's really? some wonderful Catalina channel there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the second largest population of great white sharks. That's correct. Right, right. Australia's the only one that has more. Yep. And Catalina's where my father was killed. So well, there you that go. That was never really a big family destination. I would think that would close <laughs> it off. Yeah. I did fly over there once though, when I was a private pilot, you know, doing my solos. You landed there? That's an interesting airport. To yeah, it's a at. cliff on either end. And, and it dips down. It has yeah. a dip in the middle. Right, right. No, you mess that one up, you better be <laughs> at airspeed. I'm like, my dad did this. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Okay, Robin, Gr forgive me, Robin, I'll probably butcher your name. Robin Gron Gron Moose Gronimus for Darby. I bet Israel really had to go to the outhouse in the morning after his mom wouldn't let him out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there might have been the pan under the bed. I'm not sure. Might have been the pan under the bed. Might have been the pan under the bed. Where was the exterior shots filmed when Fess walks up to the home? Was that B-roll or was that? I noticed that. Bobby and I, that was the first exterior shot. It was probably a stock shot. That was probably Fraser Park. Could have been Kanab, Utah, but I'm, I'm thinking more that that might have been Fraser Park. Can't imagine you guys going. The Kanab. We went to Kanab twice. That's a long way on. Yeah, but a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, we did a couple of shows because they had a big fort there at the time. <laughs> and All right, this question had been posed to Victoria Price, so uh, Darby's already answered this, but Bobby, was there any special memories of Halloween at the Carradine House? Yeah. Um, my one of my older brothers uh, was getting me ready for Halloween. Go ahead, you can name him. No, I can't. Oh, okay. But uh, you know those those uh, cloth baskets that had the uh, all of the, uh, the clothesline things in them? He took one of those and dumped out all the clothesline clips and he stuck that on my head. And before, uh, he didn't get any farther. I said, I don't want to be this. And he said, okay. And just walked away. And I was crushed because I thought there'd be like a little, you know, a little give and, give take. and take. Yeah. So I wound up with a sheet with a couple of holes cut in it. And I was a ghost. But How uh, old is this? This is 10 years old. But um, we took Halloween pretty seriously. 
we would go out and get a whole lot of a whole lot of candy. We I'll were just discussing with the wife what we're going to do for Halloween this year with the COVID and stuff. I guess you just put a table out. Yeah. And people grab stuff. Right. If they take more than one, you shoot them with a the BB gun. Well, I had fun with that because I used to put mannequins out in front. And then I would be in one of the masks as a mannequin. I would sit there and just freeze and then, until the older kids came up there, started like shoveling the candy. Hey, hey what are you doing? Oh yeah. Oh, oh I they guess. They would freak out. Right? Oh yeah, it was good. Um, okay, here's another question for you, Bobby, from Brenda Mudrack. Um, I would like to know if you, your brothers, and your father ever did a movie or TV show together. Yes, Kung Fu. And My all of you were in it. it? Yeah, my brother David had a television show in the 70s called Kung Fu. And in the opening sequence of every episode, you would see uh, my brother as a young man. And then as a, uh, I don't know, a 20 something. And the 20 something was played by my brother Keith. And when Keith had the, uh, the skull cap on to emulate Kwai Chang King, he really looked like David. And so there was an episode with my father, uh, uh, of course, David, because he was the star of the show, and me, um, uh, trying to remember the name of it. It was the second show of the entire series. And we were all, that's all four of us were in the show. And then the other time that happened was on, um, what what the guy that played the six million dollar man Lee Majors? Lee Majors. Yeah. What was his other show? That was Fall big? Guy. The Fall big Guy. Valley. What? Big Valley or the Fall Guy? The Fall Guy. We did a Fall Guy. It was actually a Halloween episode. My dad, David, Keith, and I were all in it. Really? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Hmm. So yes, to answer your question, yes, uh, we've all been in. An epic. What, what were you all doing together on the fall guy? I cannot possibly remember. <laughs> <laughs> but we were all on it. Well, we were all there. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. It's perhaps we can get somebody to grab us a still shot of that and uh, post it tomorrow. If they can I'm find sure a shot with all of you in it. It might exist. Why not? I'm sure. Uh, somebody wants to know if you actually have video of your dad's funeral at sea. Did you guys film it or? We didn't film it, but my brother, Bruce, who is the oldest Carradine, uh, he was climbing all around the rigging of the, uh, the Coast Guard cutter, shooting photographs, and we never saw any of them. And I'm, I'm totally uh, crestfallen that we don't have those shots because it was magnificent. It was really an incredible moment in time. That would be a cool way to go. Right? Yeah, to be buried at sea. Yeah, yeah. We were always going to try to steal Haggerty and send him off on a Viking one, set a boat on fire and, and send, send, him him a, send him adrift, yeah. The funny thing about my dad's deal was after he passed away, the boys sent me down to the Marine uh, Supply Store to get a canvas uh, sale. And oh, excuse me, there's something more important happening there's right now. There's something more important. Uh, to get a canvas sale uh, some line and a anchor. And we were going to wrap my dad up in this canvas and tie it up with, with line and then attach it to an anchor and toss him overboard. And so we were- What, to make sure he goes down? Yeah. yeah. So we were uh, looking for a boat to rent and one of my stepbrothers said, listen guys, you know, I appreciate how bummed out you are and how you want to honor dad's wish to be buried at sea but if he washes up on Santa Monica <laughs> Beach that is not going to be cool so he talked us out of it that's true if somebody saw you guys hauling that off out to sea they probably would think you guys were the, the latest mob team well the other thing he pointed <laughs> out was you know what boat captain from whom you're renting a boat is going <laughs> to toss a body over overboard <laughs> Oh, those Carradine boys. <laughs> They're at it again. Just say, we're doing it for a movie. We're, yeah. we're method actors. <laughs> right. We want to see what it's like. It's a Houdini escape uh, yeah. trick. All right. So Charles Brown wants to know, Mr. Carradine, did you ever go to go Halloween as a nerd 
asking for a friend. Mr. Carradine. Mr. Yes. Carradine. From Mr. Carradine to a nerd question. Well, it's funny that he should ask because after I made the movie, uh, when we were doing publicity for the film, uh, quite a few uh, uh, media personnel wanted to know how I came up with my rendition of the nerd. And I said, well, I basically just uh, emulated my brother, Chris, who's uh, an Imagineer for Disney. So my brother, Chris, heard that and got really pissed off. <laughs> Cut to a year later, when he's going to the Halloween party at Disney, he's dressed as a nerd. So, but to answer your, your question, sir, uh, no, I have not gone out as the nerd, not it, yet. You know, and I gotta say, long before Bill Gates or anything else, you really did make nerds cool. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you did your reality show, did they did you get to choose the outfit, or did they tell you they you needed to dress up like? No, when Lewis? we did the reality show, we were absolutely uh, going for the nerd look because uh, that was the whole idea. That Curtis Armstrong, who played Booger in the movies, he and I were going to find a group of real nerds and pit them against each other and find out who was the nerdiest of the bunch. And we took that concept uh, to a reality house called 5x5 Five Five Media, and they loved it. So that's how we got uh, to do that show for three years. Nice. Gee, I was never on it. You're not a nerd. <laughs> You're not nerdy enough, I guess, Darby. <laughs> I can play that part right now. No, these guys were not acting. The people we got for this show were not kidding. They were the real deal. One of the girls in the first uh, in the first show, um, she worked for JPL. She's a PhD, and she's like 24. 24 year old PhD. Who does that? I guess she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. For me. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to get back to our final installment. Uh, the last two installments are both like nine minutes. So should I just play it all the way through to the end, Darby? Yeah, all the way through. All the way through. The end, no so. problem here, but I'm running out of battery. <laughs> all right. Well, you have it's 18 minutes. Flow too. <laughs> all right. So this is the final installment of the episode, The Witnesses. We'll be back after it's over to wrap it all up. Stay tuned. We came running through here a while ago and went straight to his room. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't even answer me. Well, he was rude to Mrs. Pike, and when I asked him to apologize, he refused to do it. Dan, I feel very strongly about this. Now, you've got to do something more than just talk to the boy. Something has to be done to snap him out of it. At my window! Dan, this is nonsense. Now, he claimed the same thing once before. <laughs> Howdy there, Mr. Boone. Come in, Mr. Pike. Thank you. I don't want to take much of your time. Hello, Mrs. Boone. Israel. I just wanted to stop by and thank you and Mrs. Boone for your courtesy. We were pretty upset by that story your boy started, but it's nice to know you cared enough about it to apologize like you did. Only, uh, I wish you wouldn't be too hard on him. We know he didn't mean no harm. Israel, why don't you come over here and shake hands with Mr. Pike and let's settle this thing here and now. Sorry, Mr. Pike. Just not himself lately. Spring fever has got him, maybe. But like I say, don't be too hard on him. Good night, Mr. Pike. Thank you. Dan, that was the last straw.
Israel, we've carried this just about as far as we're going to. You've hurt people. And it's time you grew up and admitted your mistake. But everything I said was the truth, Pa. The boys don't back up your story, son. Now, you and your friends have tormented and played pranks on the Pikes ever since they've come to Boonesboro. But she looks like a witch. I want you just to lay there and think a while about all the bad things you and your friends have done to the Pikes, things you should be ashamed of. I want you to think about the cruel things you've done to poor people less fortunate than you. And when you're ready to act like a man, then you and I'll have a talk, man to man. How's Israel? I haven't heard a sound out of him since you left. Well, I reckon he's got a lot of thinking to do. I think I'll just stick my head in and see if he's all right. Well, I wouldn't do that, Becky. I think he's had enough talking to for one day. Hopefully some of it will sink in and he'll be all straightened out tomorrow. Anybody. I know that, but I had to tell. It's not your fault. I was the one who broke the swear. And the Black Pirate Law says I'm the one who has to take the consequences. But I'm gonna fix all that right now. I'm headed for the Pike House. Are you crazy or something? I have to find the stranger's grave. It's the only way I can prove to people that I was telling the truth. Well, they need any help. I don't want you to get in any more trouble than you're already in. Black pirates are supposed to stick together. We better round the pudge. Be right there. Hurry up. Israel, this shirt is covered with dried blood. 
Do you think it's a stranger's? Could be. Could also be Zach Pikes. He must have been covered with blood after carrying the strangers to the graveyard. Yeah. And I bet he buried his clothes here so nobody could ever find the blood stains on him. Maybe there's more. Cover up that box good. You. You're gonna be sorry for everything once my pa gets home to you. I don't think you heard right, boy. You're never gonna see your pa again. Now let's go for a walk. And bring those digging tools with you. You're going to need them. What's your name, boy? My name is Brown. Homer Brown. Ma'am. Don't ma'am me, brat. Politeness ain't gonna get you nowhere. Let's stop talking and get it over with. I want to put him on the far side of the yard. I need you to hold a candle. Move! <laughs> Spot. Plenty of room for two graves. Empty. Dig. You haven't got 
much digging to go. Keep at it. Then you can have a long, long rest. Can we have some more light over here? Just keep digging. Give him some more light. Inside, start packing. Graves. Come on. Come on. It's only a little more ways. Listen. Come on. I know you're here. You won't get away this time. You might as well come out. I'll find you anyway. Look now, I'm tired of fooling around with you kids. Come on out. Potato salad? No, ma'am. No, thank you. I'm about stuffed as it is. Pa, did they ever find out who the stranger was? His name's Sam Bedford, Israel. Evidently, he and Pike were in the Army together and were mixed up in an Army gold theft. Pike disappeared with the gold. The Army caught up with Bedford, and he served a term in prison. When he got out of prison, he went looking for Zack Pike for his share of the gold. Yeah, that's about it. From there on, you boys know the story better than anybody. Wow. Well. Wait till everybody hears about this. We'll probably all be heroes. You'll be heroes to the Army when they get that gold back, that's for sure. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they made you boys honorary colonels. Honorary colonels? 
Wow. Golly. The Black Pirate sails again! Yes, sir? I think I owe you an apology. You do? Mm-hmm. For that talking to about those tall tales? Oh, that's all right, Pa. I guess I'll tell a few more tall tales before I'm through. So just give me credit for the next time. To the game! I love that candle light on the uh, when you two are digging your graves. That was one heck of a candle. I know. Can you believe it? His dad was having me dig my own grave. And it, the candle they were using was like a I probably, spotlight. I probably could get therapy over that. You're probably still traumatized. <laughs> I am. That's only one excuse I got. Okay, Christine says no questions. Just wanted to thank you all for the break from the news and the social isolation. Love the show. Love you guys. Oh, that's um, nice. I don't see any other questions on here unless they've been asking them in the in the chat. Well, as but. the sun sets over the, <laughs> it's nice to see blue skies here again. Yeah, as the sun sets over the Western Rockies. Are you guys going to sing, Bobby? You sing, don't you? Aren't you and your brothers I, in a I, band, I, or you were at one time? Oh, I, great I guitar. A, I'm really a guitar player. Well, Darby's already told us he doesn't sing, so you'd have to sing Happy Trails on your own if you're... <laughs> Wait, why do we need that? I don't know, I for the send-off. Is that a prerequisite? You no, no wait, that's, that. that's one of my very cool things. I, mean, I got to sing Happy Trails with Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, the Sons of Pioneers, and about every great western cowboy you can think of and you were like 10 right no this is i was off the show this is the first time i ever ran into Haggerty. i was probably about 17 18. so you should have known better <laughs> then too yeah <laughs> <laughs> but darby but you don't know the words to daniel boone <laughs> he knows the words to daniel boone ask now him I do. do you after that time with Fess and Ed Ames and Veronica, and we're all up there trying to sing it, and we forgot the words, I think the tape is out there somewhere. Fess finally turned and walked away. So you made sure you'd never get caught like that again? So, right. <laughs> at least know the words to the song. All right, Charles Brown wants to know what you all's favorite rock bands are. So Darby, what's your favorite rock band? Oh, well, now that's hard, because Badwater is my all-time favorite. But I might be a little biased here since my son's a lead guitarist. <laughs> there you go. And then my, you know, my sister was the manager for Striper, which is wonderful. And those guys are having a great comeback. Yeah. And uh, Holy Soldier. And, you know, but I was a, I was a Harry Chapin. Uh, I just thought he was such a cool guy uh, on, on the stage and off the stage. Uh, John Denver. I like songwriters. I love John Denver. I mean, the songs he sang and stuff. And the songs he wrote. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, it's amazing. He all. And he was great in um, God. Oh, God. Yes, it was great. He was great in Oh, God. He came through. No, he was really, he was quite the guy. Yeah. I still miss that guy. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Bobby? What's your favorite rock band? or band's inspiration for your Favorite music? band is probably um, James Taylor, because I've been in love with James Taylor since he first showed up on the scene. Um, I love the Eagles, because yeah. those guys are so talented. 
I mean, they're just incredible. Um, Van Morrison, I really dig Van Morrison. I can't think of a, of a modern band that I dig, except for a local band here in Los Angeles uh, called Jack Shit. <laughs> Excuse me. And they are amazing. Beep that out. Beep. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the drummer's name is Pete Thomas. He's a Hall of Fame drummer uh, that drums for uh, uh, Elvis Costello. Huh? And uh, their bass player is Davey uh, Faraguay. Uh, he's also uh, the bass player for Elvis. And then their lead guitar player is Val McCallum. And countless hit records where he was the studio musician on the record. He's incredible. And as an aside, he's the son of uh, Jill Ireland and David McCallum from uh, NCIS and also for people in my age range, uh, the man from Uncle. No. And his stepfather. He's had a great career. His stepfather is Charles Ronson. Really? And this little, little lineage there. This guy, he's an amazing guitar player. And you know, to, to round it all off, of course, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. Love those guys. You How gotta say you? the Beatles. That you doesn't know, matter what generation. Because I loved them back then. And back then you took a lot of heat for loving them. But Sticks. They were really good. I really like Sticks. They had a couple of songs, Why Must You Be an Angry Young Man? That got me through a couple of rough times. I bet. Yeah. Very nice. So any parting words? So anybody got anything going on? You can catch Bobby in our movie, Nearly Departed, on Amazon Prime. You can catch Darby in Screen Test once we get that online. That's actually not oh. screening anywhere right now. but. And I'm hitting you up on this. And you don't have to do this, but I know you probably will anyway. I was just singing for our friend Johnny because we both did the Marshall with Johnny. And, you know, I still have a couple He's of- He's talking work. about Johnny Crawford. Johnny Crawford, sorry. And, and I still have some posters that we all signed in a whole big package with a lot of other pictures and stuff. But I know that's at a higher price. Maybe I'll get you to sign like uh, five of the posters, just you and me. How much money have you got, Darby? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'll sign them. And and we'll, we'll put those on at a much lower, uh, 50 bucks you and me on a poster and I'll get them out to people and all that will go straight to Johnny who I want to let you all know is doing much better Good. you know he actually got uh, he actually got COVID and, oh. they, and they had to move him out into a, a special place and then he had to get tested twice negative before he could move back in and so he's good now? He's good now Amazing. You know, he's, a, he's a tough guy he pulled he through and I'm sure he's still got that great smile on his face I'm sure he does so I'm sorry to uh, rope you into that while you're just sitting here, but it's okay. I knew I had to pay. You know, you know you that's pay, the price of the popcorn and right. the chicken and, and, and the pasta and the pasta there, yeah. not to mention. Uh, the liquor. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming and doing this. It was a lot of fun. It was an honor to get to work with your dad. It's an honor to carry it on and get to work with you. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Just cracks me up to work with my dad. Cracks me up. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was great. You know, that's that's one great thing. Fest and this show really attracted a lot of the top actors at the time. I love and, it. And what a calf! She was wonderful in it too. And the fact that I got to do a couple other things with her too. So yeah. Well, Thank Ginger. You. Well, on Thank that you. note, fellas, I appreciate both of you. You two are my two favorite guys. So it's been wonderful spending the evening with you, as they say. Yeah. And, uh, and thank you for dealing with all those little technical things and stuff. Uh, you know, if it was me, we'd all still be trying to log on. Sorry about that, everybody. But you'll never know it when you see the final result. So we'll perhaps Bobby will figure something out we'll for long riders. That might be to, fun. We'll, yeah, that would be great. I we'll, love doing that. That'd be kind of fun. So we'll figure that out. And uh, okay. you guys have a wonderful evening. Darby and I will figure out who's going to be on next. And okay. uh, next time we do this, whenever it is, Darby, call me. <laughs> call me. Let me know. <laughs> you guys stay safe. She knows it's not to say text me, email me. I'm so bad at that. Call me. We'll yeah. work it on. <laughs>
Are you right. going to make your announcement? And if you get a message from Darby on Messenger, it is not Darby. Ignore it. It's spam. He never right. uses Messenger ever, okay. ever, ever, ever. ever. <laughs> is. Or for right. Robert Carradine. Everybody. Thank you for joining. Good night, Ginger. Good, Good night. night, Bobby. Good night, Darby. Good night, everybody. And we will see you soon. Thank you. Good night.